Uh, welcome to our panel, House of Card uh, Telco 5G. And uh, this is Kandan Khadrivel uh, from Google. And uh, we have three panelists uh, joining today, uh, Sana from uh, TELUS and Daniel from Bell Canada and uh, KJ from at and uh, And we're going to talk uh, today about uh, why cloud native uh, approach is very important uh, in terms of uh, Telco 5G deployment. Uh, as you know that uh, 4G primarily used the virtual network functions and the private cloud to support those virtual network function. There are multiple uh, changes and the paradigm shift is happening with respect to uh, 5G. That's one is from the virtual network function uh, into the container network function deployment and also transition from private cloud to public cloud and uh, also the adoption of the open RAM and the telcos also wants like a multi-vendor uh, solution uh, in order to support the 5G at the scale. And uh, these all need to be bring together uh, to support uh, the, the full end-to-end -end automation of the 5G. And uh, there are challenges today with respect to how the cloud native has been applied and, uh, and deployed with respect to 5G. And uh, the open source community has done a great job in uh, supporting the container network function with respect to Kubernetes. Uh, but there are still gaps that need to be addressed with respect to the open source community. And in this panel, uh, we're going to talk about uh, what is already out there, which is like uh, what what is the gaps and things that the open source community and the standard bodies has to uh, support it. Uh, so with that, uh, let's start with a question to uh, Sana. So Sana, why do you think uh, cloud native principles are very important uh, with respect to the 5G deployment? Kandan, I think it's an important subject to touch on. I think um, I first try to ask ourselves a very fundamental question, like being service providers, why did we even want that shift to happen from um, the virtual network functions to cloud native network functions? I think we were not happy or satisfied with the degree of fragility or the optimization or efficiency or automation that we leveraged from the virtual network functions. So I think we wanted to improve one step further. We wanted to get to better optimizes, optimized capacity, uh, increased portability, consistent, simplified operational models across all of our workloads. These were our hopes and dreams. But when the transformation started happening and they started receiving the cloud native functions, these are in fact packaged as containers, but they are not yet following all the cloud native principles to date. So our first expectation that we would be able to uh, put them on any cloud and they're truly cloud native, but today they are coming with their customized requirements and each CNF has its own requirement from the infrastructure. Now each cloud native function that we are receiving has a different type of footprint, which is coming from its legacy monolithic uh, uh, solution. Similarly, you see that there is a different deployment model for each one of these. There is very complex proprietary configuration models that exist for deployment of these network functions. So we are losing that dream of consistent, simplified operational model. Like we are making a shift in technology to get to the stage where they are packaged as containers, but we are not yet finding all the benefits of agility and automation. Um, another quick note that I wanted to make for automation, I think a big driver behind doing all of this was our time to market, a very simplified, easier, faster, better automation, which we are still not seeing. Um, and a big reason for that, again, is not complying with all the cloud native principles, which is like a checklist of 12 factors, which we see that is not completely met today in our, our, our network functions. Um, the automation today is done as like a wrapper around the big monolithic network functions rather than something which is built into the DNA of the function itself truly means that we are not following the 12 factor principles and um, management and configurations and deployment is all happening in extremely customized way for each type of CNF which is not what we are expecting and I think we need to continue discussing through this panel uh, of a solution to the problem that that exists and we can we can discuss that further. So great point, uh, Sanath. Uh, so, um, so your point is that uh, primarily the Kubernetes actually automates the compute, storage, and the network, but there's still gaps in terms of how the network function need to be automated on top of the, the cloud infrastructure. And I think it is a great point. So with that, uh, Daniel, uh, what's your thought in terms of the cloud principle and how do you think that that applies to the 5G? I think, uh... The, the notion, Sana uh, really explained it really well around the fact that the packaging we saw from a PNF to a VNF 
and now CNF in the first iterations of CNF hasn't changed that much. A sign that you're now do- pulling a Docker file versus an ISO, or just getting a bin from a vendor on a router. So I think this needs to evolve. And the, the other thing that I think is important as we see the growth of the cloud-native community is what impact it has on our networking infrastructures. Uh, I'm just thinking about the old uh, and, and management and service assurance like we used to, u- to use in the networks. And now we're seeing, well, why don't we leverage, for example, tooling that comes from CNCF like Prometheus directly on those boxes rather than having another layer of of systems to try to do data collection. Those are things that as we look at cloud native principles, and we think about the CNF, to me, I think about the CNF on a 5G service, but I'm moving more towards any network function, even physical network functions can leverage the cloud native principles in some parts of their uh, their, uh, their their design. I think as well, uh, Sana explained well, is we live the burden of trying to go from a PNF, which was closed, to go to a, a VNF where the burden of all those uh, the ecosystem that is required to make it evolve took time. So as we thought that VNF uh, and at CNV would go fast when it started and we'd be able to deploy in a few years, we ended up like a decade later almost and still not the full promise because it took time for all the infrastructure to adapt. At the same time, we see the growth of cloud capabilities and the evolution that goes in blazing speed. And this is where I think you, you would like to have your network evolve as fast and be able to adapt as fast as the cloud is evolving to leverage the, the immense learning that you get out of it. Um, I have a, per, a, a particular pet peeve that I would like to be able to gremlin my 5G network rather than build a network which is around old ways of doing service assurance and resiliency. Why can't my 5G core be as resilient as a Netflix system, for example, in the cloud would be that's the, the, the thing that every operator would like, because in the, re- in the end, your service is really more uh, m- m- resilient and, uh, and uh, effective than having to over con- uh, con- uh, consume resources just in case some failure happens. I think this is the, one of the things operators would, would really strive towards as they evolve their services. Speed of, uh, of development and also leveraging the scale and the capabilities of cloud for service assurance and uh, resiliency. Great point, uh, Daniel. I think the the scale, in order to adopt a scale, uh, the cloud native approach need to be applied uh, to not only for the cloud infrastructure, but also the workload, which are network functions that need to change and adapt into the cloud native principles. And I think it's a really a great point. Uh, so with that, KJ, what's your thoughts in terms of uh, uh, the cloud native principle and uh, how do you think that it applies to the 5G? So I think uh, Sana and Daniel did a great job at covering the key points, right? I would I would go a little bit further. So I, I also approach this from the point of view of the radio access network, which again brings its own unique set of challenges given the extremely high level of distribution that uh, it involves. Often, you know, the minimum being a few thousand sites to uh, hundreds of thousands of locations for a large um, nationwide uh, network operator. And uh, it's it's really uh, useful to ask what are cloud native principles as it applies to uh, networks of the scale. And you know people talk about microservices and uh, other things for cloud native principles, but really what drives this is the need for automation, right? The need for automation to help uh, scale these networks to deploy faster, to make changes faster, to result uh, uh, resolve problems faster. And designing for that automation, be it whether it's in the infrastructure deployment itself with zero touch provisioning, uh, a automated software deployment pipeline with CI CD, uh, standardized fault and performance telemetry, uh, uh, scaling of those network elements so that uh, dynamic capacity or uh, fault tolerance can be accomplished. I think these are all design goals that are shared between what network designers have always wanted and what where cloud what cloud native offers right so i'd say design for automation is a key aspect of cloud native that uh, really needs to be uh, embraced by the um, uh, by the 5g um, uh, networks and uh, aspects like you know stateful and stateless are uh, effectively in support of that goal right if you have stateless functions it helps you with automation it helps you with not having to have those bespoke models of m- making sure those state is maintained and so on. So I'd say start with automation. The other aspect I would say uh, 
which is relevant for cloud native principles is uh, decoupling of the uh, uh, from hardware uh, uh, specific configurations as much as possible. Now, in the radio access network, this is easier said than done. This is still a very performance centric and intensive uh, part of uh, the stack. But even here, I think uh, you know uh, tools that say the cloud community has developed in terms of managing accelerators, having standardized interfaces for those, I think can really help uh, pave the way for there to be uh, true mixing and matching. And uh, you know, operators really need this because this is an area where we do have a complex ecosystem and a supply chain where software is coming from multiple parties. And uh, without some kind of uh, standardized cloud native approach, you run the risk of, sure, people will give you containers, but then you end up having to build a bespoke kind of uh, collection of software to manage those, uh, depending upon which uh, source they come from, you haven't really made that much progress. So I think having standardized use of cloud native principles really will uh, help uh, ease scalability of um, these kind of networks. Thank you, KJ. I think it's a great point that uh... The container network function does exist for 5G, but the, the real gap is like in a standard way of deploying that in a cloud native way, especially a configuration management and the automation that takes from uh, top to bottom, the service layer and uh, the domain layers like RAN and the core you touched on and as well as the infrastructure, uh, because most of the time this uh, network functions uh, typically uh, uses the custom configuration that are uh, different for each network function, uh, even though they call this like a RAN and core, but each network function needs a different uh, from the cloud. And I think that's a great point that you touched on. So with that, uh, I would ask one more question uh, here, which is, uh, uh, so there are CNS based deployment and we say, we are saying that there is not a standard. And uh, I would like to hear the pain points that, you know, without the standard, uh, what are the pain points that uh, primarily you guys see uh, when you are deploying the 5G network or testing it in the lab? So I would start with Daniel, what's your thoughts on this? The problem, I think uh, it's gonna be some funny, but I think the problem is a bit of uh, the commercialization and the monetization of a CNF. When you start to have open interfaces and more like a committee or open ways of doing the automation, like using mechanisms like operators or CRDs or whatever we can think from the committee, it's a it's a different aspect from a VNF vendor or CNF vendor that has his own tool set who wants to leverage that tool set. So right now the trouble we have is we run our CNF. They can run on a cloud native platform any kind of flavor of communities with the right extensions for for operators, NUMA nodes, all those things. But then you realize a lot of the wrapping around is done by the vendors to try to adapt to it rather than uh, and shield it or uh, wrap it around their aura of automation to try to fit the, the old model of automation com uh, compared to try and leverage the, the mechanism that already exists. So that's a challenge. Same as that's just thinking about automation. The second thing is how to abstract the, the cloud platform, the community's uh, uh, infrastructure, or any other uh, separate uh, uh, augmented tools from the, the workload. So actually, I, I was at the CNF working group a few weeks ago, and I said that right now we're testing the platform more than we're testing the workload. So we're trying to figure out is the platform confirmed to run a specific 5G workload, while in reality we should say is the 5G workload able to run on any kind of, of Kubernetes platform. And this is the, the approach that we see right now. So for any operator right now in the world is we're trying to adapt to any CNF vendor with the way they are deployed and their tooling and the augmentations they do to operate the life cycle and automation versus, well, I have a common ground of a platform which is based on standard communities of offerings and APIs and any other SIGs that exist and can it run on it by default? Or, And that's I think that's a, this is the challenge I think industry-wide every operator is dealing with right now. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, it's a great point that uh, the vendors does actually lock with uh, their proprietary tool set, even though it is a CNF, and that there is a lack of standard in the industry uh, in terms of defining this container network function in a cloud native way using the Kubernetes methodology of CRDs and operators. And I think it's really a great point. So with that, Sana, what's your thoughts on this? 
Um, Daniel, I think we are touching on some real interesting uh, points uh, here and there between KJ and Daniel and what you're bringing up right now. So I think to address the pain points of deployment in the 5G, uh, I, I'll start with, um, it, it, it all lies goes back to not following the cloud native principles. So I want to bring up another interesting element that I have seen in this evolution, which is not really happening. Um, the footprints are still very, very large. And the resiliency and reliability models are still based on the server type architecture, like N plus one, two N, two N plus one, things like that. That was the server mindset. Now, when you're moving into a cloud and you're just defining everything in, in the containers, it's all software-centric word. The reliability model has to change. And why this is important? Because when you get a workload, you need to deploy a very large footprint. That large footprint requires much harder automation and all the proprietary methodologies coming from these vendors because it's not simple to, to decode their, their large configurations and their topologies in the container world. So when you look at their large size, I'm just trying to answer the question, like where is the problem? Uh, they are justifying the vendors providing these network functions that we are looking for the 5.9 reliability model. That is why they're still large footprints, which is, of course, very, very operationally inefficient and smart cloud-like at the same time. The reliability model in the servers, and now we're moving into the cloud and the containerized world, has to change from not ever failing to fail fast and recover faster, which refers to the degree of agility that you can have a thin, lightweight CNS. You have the ability, as we talked about in the beginning of the session, the analytics are completely controlled by Kubernetes, where it can scale, heal, manage the workloads. It can help you recover faster, and you can still get the same degree of reliability. The other big problem falls around our degree of trust on the system that we are that we are using. Uh, we are probably just packaging our, our CNFs and containers, but we are not leveraging the inherent characteristics of Kubernetes to actually heal, scale, thin, lightweight applications and get that degree of flexibility, portability into our, our network functions. I think the biggest pain point, one of the biggest pain points is this, which actually brings their challenges in, the, in, in, the, in terms of automation. You have a struggle uh, with all these vendors with the large size applications to, to, to deploy them, test them incrementally as we are doing in our DevOps team structure. You know that the transformation happened in many different verticals across service providers, not just technology, but the culture, mindset, skill set, everything is constantly changing. Uh, and that one element is not helping us test iteratively and continuously work on improving our agility and portability. Um, the other big things I think we touched on again and again, extreme customizations required by each CNF, the way it's packaged and the way it expects everything around it to change. Like we, uh, Daniel also mentioned, these CNFs are not expecting to conform to a cloud and exploit the capabilities of that cloud. They're all coming in with their own baggage their own tooling, their own, their own analytics, their own automation templates, their own configuration models. We need to treat them like cattle, not pets. And today they're very much behaving as cattle. With it, this results in an increased complexity, a very large operational overhead. And I think these are all the kind of pain points that I can bring to the table. And of course, there are many more. It, it, is, it is a great point, uh, Sana. I think you touched this uh, uh, pet versus cattle. And, yeah. Uh, this is an important mantra with respect to the cloud and yeah. uh, that approach, you know, like uh, really treating every workload as a, as a cattle. Uh, I think it's very important in terms of uh, deploying this into the cloud and uh, uh, the network function vendors adopting that into the nature of the cloud is very important. And also you touched the point that uh, uh, Kubernetes way of actually doing the whole automation. I think it is a very important point to note. Uh, so with that, if you talked about uh, the challenges uh, with respect to how the uh, container network function is deployed into the network as of today and uh, the need for cloud native automation, uh, not only on the, the infrastructure layer, but uh, from the top to bottom, uh, that's what primarily you discussed about. And also the challenges with respect to the multiple tooling and uh, issues with uh, the network functions are not truly cloud native. Uh, so with that, uh, I would uh, like to understand your perspective of, you know, like what do you like to see in the open source community and the standards and uh, especially from vendors, like uh, what's your perspective on that? So with that, KJ, what's your thoughts on? Yeah, I think this is a really important question, Kandan. And, and, and I think that um, if you look at, say, the open source community, Kubernetes and so on, 
you look at standards like 3PPO and, and so on, they're kind of each doing a great job in their own silos. But where I think the gap is, is in these two, so far, I think distinct communities to really be working together. And I think it's pretty critical because when you uh, get into uh, areas like uh, network deployments for uh, using cloud technology, you're really getting into a situation where you have a mix of open source and closed source. You know, for the most part, network functions are very closed source. A lot of cloud technology, especially Kubernetes and the infrastructure surrounding it is open source. So it's really critical. One, one community cannot ignore the other. And uh, I think uh, where, uh, for example, uh, we need some, um, uh, some some improvements uh, on both sides. I think uh, you know. Let me just start with uh, with things like Kubernetes. I think uh, the Kubernetes infrastructure to handle um, uh, accelerators and uh, other hardware uh, variations. Um, there are some areas that uh, could be improved there. On the standard side, I think we need uh, also more participation from folks who are conversant and steeped in open source to be able to uh, drive uh, open use of open source more in the standards, right? And, and a perfect example I'll give you is say with Kubernetes, there is already a lot of good tooling and technology to pull things like performance faults, to do automation and so on. But until the closed source software that runs on it, the workloads, they don't agree on how those mechanisms are to be used. Uh, you're still going to see this wide range of uh, um, different implementations that use the core building blocks in different ways. So I think, uh, you know, in, in almost ironically, I would say that that there is a need for open source people to come into standards and influence standards in a way that they leverage open source building blocks more than they do today. It's a it's a great statement, uh, KJ. I think uh, uh, I, I think the important message to note here from your uh, your points is that there are uh, efforts with uh, you know open source and standards, and I think it is all not connected to bring together the holistic automation that are needed to make this cloud native approach possible with respect to 5G or even beyond 5G. And I think it is a great point. So with that, uh, Daniel, uh, what's your thoughts on this? I think uh, KJ touched a right great point. So there's two levels of it. So um, you need uh, kind of a open source or community driven approach to cloud native automation and tooling from telemetry, analytics, uh, closed loop automation, including to how you define the infrastructure, the workload that needs to be deployed, and the, the day two running config. You need to find a way to make it more cloud agnostic or uh, efficient in that way. But that also relies on some things in the underlying frameworks to be consumable this way. For example, I think uh, yeah, KJ talked about accelerators, but it goes beyond uh, like the use of specialized accelerators. You go to level of how we do network segmentation in Kubernetes. How do we uh, increase network profiling in Kubernetes? Those kind of things also need to go and, and, and work together. The challenge we have is uh, to make those automation work in a better way using declarative models and the way we do cloud native uh, automation and the new principles operators, CRDs and, and, uh, and others is how to consume it in the cloud and make the cloud not go overboard. I have, I'm always afraid of asking the cloud ecosystem to adapt to networking, uh, the networking ecosystem and change its ways. For example, we didn't think about this, like PNFs used to run with five NICs to do so those in that kind of segmentations. What we did, we go to, uh, to see a Kubernetes and uh, let's bring multis and multiple interfaces because we don't want to change the way that the, that the application is done. So I think it's, AKG was really right, is you need to have an adaptation and a, everybody bring water to their glass of wine so that the cloud systems are able to adapt and be able to represent the requirements for telco needs, but also the VNF and the CNFs and the, the way the vendors create, the, the developers create those applications, also change the mindset and adapt towards different ways of doing things in the, in the, in the cloud way of how to plug those, those, those systems together. Thank you, Daniel. I think it's a great point. Uh, uh, Sana, what's uh, your thoughts on this? Uh... Uh, you know, where does where does the open source has to change in your perspective? Kandan, um, I believe uh, great points by KJ and Daniel. And uh, what I would love to add is that I'm a huge fan of open source. 
And really in this ecosystem and this evolution, open source is the heart of everything, like standards, public cloud, private cloud, service providers, that's what brings all of us together. Now, what is it that we can do in the open source to talk about all the challenges that KJ and Daniel mentioned? I think a big need for that is, how do we standardize the deployment of these network functions in one consistent model? Like, how do we get rid of all these vendors' proprietary ways of their analytics, their, their tooling, their configurations? How do we unify that? There is a big need for that. Maybe open source is the best place to start, and then we push those to the standards to basically bring it all together. Being service providers, we need to prioritize that because this will help us realize our big goals and dreams for 5G. What is really ironic to me at the moment is that I've been working in the automation orchestration for the last five years, and I know where the existing state of this is. No matter how much we work, it is still not faster, simpler, efficient. It is not standards-based to date. We do this, but we do more effort in automation than we leverage the benefits out of automation. So Daniel mentioned something like declarative models. I think we're losing that fundamental principle where we are not abstracting the complexities away from this underlining structure. And at the same time, we're talking about network sizing and all those more sophisticated, fancier ways of automation on the top. We need to address the fundamental problems at the root of this to extend the, the simplicity, the efficiency that would enable us to realize the much bigger dreams of our software-defined services and network sizing and all that. That needs to be addressed and that needs to be taken care of at the, at the open source level. A standardized way of uh, deploying these network functions, a way for us to check mark all the 12 factors of the cloud native principles, which we all touch in different ways. Uh, configurations, and how do we do that? Being service providers, I think, what do we do in open source and together with standards that actually solve this fundamental problem for all of us? Thank you, Sana. And I think the panelist has shared uh, their thought process around uh, the gaps and uh, what already exists and uh, what are the changes that they allow to see in the open source and standard community as well as from uh, uh, network function vendors adopting into the cloud native approach and i think it's very clear that uh, there are efforts on individual communities and standard bodies but there need to be a cohesive effort where this whole automation into an automation is exercised and uh, in terms of uh, kubernetes it's a well-proven technology uh, for a cloud native approach of uh, implementation. Uh, extending that uh, Kubernetes methodology uh, in terms of not only for deployment of the container network function, but also for end to end automation would uh, definitely bring uh, uh, harmony and full automation across all the layers that infrastructure, the network function, and the service layer. And I think it is a great point, and I think the community should come together and make that happen. And uh, thank you for joining our panel today. And it is a great discussion. And all panelists, thanks for joining with us today. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Pleasure.